Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint a Skitari miniature from the Forge World Metallica. This of course is a miniature by Games Workshop for Warhammer 40,000. The miniature we're going to be using for our example is a Skitari Vanguard, however the method we're going to be using can be applied to just about any infantry miniature that you want to paint in the Skitari army. So we really hope you find this video useful if you want to collect Metallica, and we'll see you at the desk. Before we start painting Eskitari in the Metallica colour scheme, a sad but true fact about these miniatures is that when you're building the infantry figures, you'll often find painting the inside of the robes is really tricky because all cables and things get in the way in such a way that it's actually possible to get the brush to that detail. So a great way of fixing this is to think about something when you're building the miniatures, and that is when it comes to gluing the model to the base, just glue it at the heel on one foot with a small little bit of super glue. This then allows you to build the rest of the miniature and pose it as you like, and then undercoat it as well using the base for stability. And then when it comes time to painting it, what we can do is remove the model from the base which will allow us to access those robes. And that's exactly what I've got here. You can see my miniature undercoated with Mechanica Standard Grey. What I'm going to do now is remove it from the base before we start painting the inside of those robes as the first step. Now to do this I am going to use my hobby knife for this, and if you're a youngster you'll want to get an adult to do this for you, but it is only very slightly glued so this should come off very very easily. So the area is just there, just going to work the knife under the foot and there we go, nice and easy. So with that done we can now paint the inside of the robes, and the colour for this is going to be some corn red from Citadel. To apply it what you need to do is to get a medium large brush, something like a regiment brush in the army painter is perfect, and that's what I'm going to use just here. And here we go, start out with a little bit of corn red on the palette, thin down with a touch of water as always, there we go, so it's nice and smooth. And then with this you can see I can now easily access the underside of the miniature. So all we've got to do is paint all this area here using corn red like this. There we go, get into all that detail now, and in addition we want to paint the shoulder plates for this colour scheme as well. Once you've finished with the corn red, you can then move on to the next colour, which is going to be Corvus Black, and this is going to be for the undersuit on the miniature. Now when starting out with this colour, again you might want to still keep the model off the base so you can access the legs mainly, and I'm going to be using the same brush for this, the regiment brush still to begin with, because a lot of this detail is very large, but that's exactly what I'm going to do with those legs. First of all, just getting that paint nicely diluted and ready, and you can see just what I mean here, because once again it allows us to get underneath this detail without catching any of the red, because we can just access all that area much much easier, including on the back of the legs just here, even those parts that are visible through the cables. Now in addition there are some parts of the understoot that still show elsewhere around the miniature, for example on the hands and things, but you've probably noticed by now that handling the model like this for painting is really actually really fiddly, so what I recommend you do is paint the legs all around here and then glue it onto the base, then continue with all the undersuit things, and it's areas such as the hands for example just around here. And there we are, all the black detail is now base coated, and the models are glued onto the base as well, making it much easier to handle as we move on to base coating other colours on it. Now the next base coat colour is going to be Rakar Flesh, which is going to be for the outside of the robes, and forms one of the major colours of this army. And in fact for all their armour, like vehicles and things, that is Rakar Flesh. These robes are going to be a little bit lighter however to separate those two tones of white, so later on we are going to make it lighter, but the base coat is important to get a nice finish to it. So Rakar Flesh, which I'm going to be applying using my regiment brush once again, and as before we just need to make sure we get it nicely thinned down on the palette so it's nice and smooth, especially for the outside of those robes to get that smooth finish to them. So make sure it's diluted, and that your brush isn't overloaded, and then it's just a matter of painting it onto these areas. So the part we're talking about is this area around here going all around the main part of the body, but in addition there are some sleeves as well to do around here, and also there are little bits of it visible through these pipes that you get on the body there, so just beneath the chest. Now one of the things to make sure you base coat at this stage is that if you have any purity seals on here, be sure to get the parchment with this colour as well, for example around here. And there we are, the outside of the robe and the parchment is now base coated and we're ready to move on. And well, to the Tech Priest Overlords these guys might just be disposable heroes, but to us there's something a little bit more, so we want to make sure that we pick out all that detail. The first stage for doing this is to base coat it of course, and for this we're going to start out with some lead belcher for all that silver detail in the miniatures, followed by some Balthazar gold which we'll use to break up the silver a little bit. Now after that we need some Mornfang brown, which is going to be for the leather, and finally some Rhinox hide for the wood on his gun. 
But first of all, we need that lead belcher. And a lot of these areas are actually quite large. So to begin with, I'm gonna use my regiment brush from the Army Painter, but you might want to have a smaller one. For example, a medium layer brush from Citadel on hand just for some of the finer detail, because some of it can get quite small. However, whatever you choose, as always, get your paint thinned down and ready. And then it's just a matter of picking out all these silver details. And to begin with, there's a very large one on here on the top of the body. So we've got the helmet up here and all these cables going down here onto the chest over the cog mechanicum, all this kind of area along here. So armor is the area to begin with. But also we want to look out for any cables with kind of the ridged texture to them. And you can see some of it is on the chest of this guy going around here. And you can see as I'm doing this, this is when I need to start being really careful and where you might want to switch to a smaller brush to allow you to access those details without getting the paint onto anything that you've done so far. We also want to look out for any bionic limbs, such as the arm just here, and again, we've got a ridged cable running up there, and of course the legs down here. And also we want to keep an eye out for smaller details such as plugs and things like that. So there's a little plug just on the inside of the leg right there, and also there's some armor hiding just underneath the robe just there. So you see it's a matter of just looking out for these details and just neatly picking them out. Next we need a little bit of Balthazar gold, and this is more detailed work now, so I've switched to a medium layer brush from Citadel for this, and there's mainly two parts to doing this. First of all, we're looking for decorative elements, for example trims, such as going over the shoulders here and on the shoulder plates too, and details such as the cog mechanicum we've got just along here, and also there's all the trim that's on the rifle, so for example around about here. But in addition, we can use this colour to break up really large areas of silver to add a bit more interest to them. So for example, if we take a look at the helmet, the front of the breathing apparatus is a great example just here, such as just there, and you can see it just makes it a little bit more interesting around that area. Once you're happy with the amount of Balthazar gold, you're ready to move on to Mornfang Brown. And this is for any leather details, most of which are going to be for this coating that we've got on the backpack, but sometimes you might have a few leather details visible on the waist of the miniature as well. And finally, we need a small amount of Rhinox hide to paint the wood of his carbine. Now for this, it's a little bit tricky sometimes getting it in amongst all the trim, but don't worry if you do make any mistakes. It's very easy to neaten up again using Balthazar gold. But the trick is just to make sure the paint's nicely thinned down so it just runs into that recessed area. And with that, we've now finished applying all the base coats onto the miniature, and we can move on to the next step, which is to wash it completely to really bring out all the detail on it. And for this, I'm going to go for a dark brown. I'm going to go for Agrax Urshade from Citadel, although you could use Strong Tone from the Army Painter instead if you prefer. To apply it, what you need is a good large brush. I'm using a medium shade brush from Citadel, and you just need to load it with plenty of this paint. And you can use a palette here if you want to. I like to because it helps me control how much I'm putting onto the miniature at once. But if you're feeling a little bit braver, you can, of course, go straight from the pot. What you want to do is just load up your brush with lots of this paint and then take your model and just start applying it all over it. So you just want to paint it on like this so it runs into all that recessed detail and gives it lots of definition. Now when you get to areas such as the robes, in particular the ones going down here, you'll notice of course it's very smooth. So don't worry about putting it really thickly on here. You can see I'm just spacing it out so it's nice and thin like that. So I'm getting some definition on there, but it's not running too much into recessed details and pooling too much. That will tend to happen in areas where it arcs inwards. For example, around there you can see it's very easy, especially if I get a fresh load of paint on my brush. There you go, you can see it can really pool in areas such as that. If you let it dry like that, it can look a little bit unpleasant. So just redistribute it elsewhere, just moving it around like this using your brush before it's dry. And once you've applied it all over the miniature, it'll take around about an hour to dry, and nothing else matters other than making sure it's completely dry before you move on to the next step. The shade's now completely dry, so we can move on to the next phase, which is to layer the miniature to brighten the detail up a bit, and also neaten up some of the slightly mucky appearance that, that shade gives once it's dry. And for this, we're going to return to Rakarth flesh first of all, and reapply it to the robes. Now this time I'm going to be applying it using my medium layer brush from Citadel, and again I'm going to be using the palette, but I'm going to thin it down a little bit more than I did previously, so it's a little bit more runny, and the idea for this is it'll give a smoother finish to it. And there we go, so about to that point roughly there, just get rid of the excess off my brush, and load up and there we go. So now when we're applying it this time, what we're looking for is deep recesses and it's really the deepest recesses that we're looking to miss out because this is actually gonna form some of the shading for the next step as well. So for example, in the sleeve, if I start painting on like this, you can see we've got these creases just on the inside of the elbow there. 
Uh, some particularly deep ones there where the shade's really strong, such as just there. But for these more shallow ones just beyond it, I'm going to paint into those there like that. So you see by the end of doing this, really it's only the deepest recesses that are still showing. Now on the flat of the robes, there obviously isn't much to do here because, well, much to leave because they're so smooth anyway. But really you can see there are some areas where you get more shade collecting. And those are the parts to avoid in this part. So I'm just going to follow the top of that crease there, skip a little bit above it, and then carry on along there like that. I've finished layering now with the Rakarth flesh and you can see I painted the vast majority of those robes now. With that done we can now move on to the next step which is to layer them once again with a lighter colour this time. I'm going to be using Pallid Witch flesh which is the actual mid-tone of these robes. Now if you're painting any armour or an armoured vehicle, for example an Onager, then Rakarth flesh forms the actual off-white colour of those armour plates and then Pallid Witch flesh becomes the highlight rather than a layer. And this is a nice little subtle thing that you see on a lot of Skitari kits that just ties these different surfaces together even though they've got different textures and just helps separate them slightly. It's a really nice feature of it, but what we need to do now is start layering this miniature. So with that Pallid Witch flesh, what you need to do is again grab hold of a medium layer brush. And with this, what you should do is again thin it down as always, but go into this expecting to be having to apply two thin coats of it. Because this colour is quite a, quite a weak colour and it's very, very light. So by applying multiple coats of it, you ensure you get a smooth finish to it and a nice transition from the dark to the light as well. So you can see then I've thinned the paint down and I'm just going to get rid of the excess off my brush once again so I'm not putting on too much at once. There we go. And now ready to start layering this onto the robes. And like before, what I'm looking to do is to look for those recesses and avoid them. And you can see just what a jump this colour is now. You can see how light it is. But this time I'm being even more selective about what I'm avoiding. So I'm looking for the more shallow recesses. For example, I've got a bit of a crease in here. I'm just going to skip that, you see, to start to build up that definition and texture for the fabric. I'm also going to leave some of the Rakar flesh showing as the recess starts to happen towards those darker ones where the shade is still there. So this way you see I'm building up a transition from the really light colour here to the sort of slightly darker one of Rakar flesh and then the darker shaded Rakar flesh beneath it like that. And this way I just build up that volume really of the robes. I'm also looking for the more subtle creases that come down from the top here. You can see they're just going underneath those cables like that, just being really careful around those. And there you go, you can see it's steadily built it up. Now it's also a little bit transparent, you can see it's a little bit uneven there, so this is why you apply that second thin coat. You just allow it to dry and then apply the second coat over the top and this gives you a much more even finish. I finished applying that second coat of Pallid Witch Flesh and you can see it just achieves a nice smooth finish to those white robes. And with that done we can now move on to the remaining layers that we need to do. First of all we're going to be returning to Corn Red for all that red detail, followed by some lead belcher to make the silver nice and shiny once more. After that we'll use some hash up copper and all those bronze details and finally we just need a very small amount of Screaming Skull. But first of all I need some Corn Red and again I'm going to be using the medium layer brush for it. And this is just like with those previous stages, just need a small amount of this, nicely thinned down so it's a bit transparent and a little bit runny, so kind of like that. And then just make sure your brush isn't overloaded. After that, it's just a matter of identifying these red areas and painting a small amount of this paint over the middle of them, leaving the shaded areas in the recesses. So for example, on the inside of the robes, we're looking at areas just along there, being careful around that purity seal, and a little bit above there. But as we get to the inside of the robes, you can see these parts that are difficult to get to. Don't worry about all of that because it can just stay shaded really dark red. But really it's these areas that are easier to access. For example, around here, and of course the shoulder plates as well. Next we're ready to apply a layer of lead belcher onto the silver details and this is really for the flat panels, don't worry about the cables or anything like that. And the main purpose of it is to give a nice shiny finish to the metal so it appears well maintained and polished. And you can see with that layering done on the silver it's made it much shinier, so now we're going to do the same thing on the bronze details using Hash Hut Copper. So still using the medium layer brush, once again what we want to do is to paint this on to the flats of these surfaces so they get a nice shine on them whilst avoiding those recess details such as the rivets around here. And finally all we need is a small amount of Screaming Skull and this is for a layer on any parchment on the miniature just to help separate it from the robes, especially if like the one up here is against them.
And with that, the layering is complete and we can now move on to the next phase, which is to highlight the miniature. Now you don't have to do the highlights if you don't want to. Instead, if you decide not to, you can skip ahead now towards the end of this video where we're going to be doing the glowing blue effects on the weapons and the lenses and things like that. However, if you want to do the highlights, the first color that you're going to need is white scar, which is going to be for the outside of those robes. Now to apply it, you want a smaller brush with a fine tip. I'm going for a small airbrush from Citadel for this one. And what we're going to do is first of all just get some paint ready on top of this Rakar flesh and just so you can see what I'm doing against the uh, the white of the palette. Because what I want to do is to thin it down so it's quite transparent you see. So a little bit more water than that. There we go. So it's a little bit runny, a little bit see-through and then just make sure I don't have too much paint on the brush there by just twisting away the excess like that. And then what I'm going to do is start moving the model to be able to access it with this kind of motion. This very natural motion of moving my hand up and down like that. Because what I want to do is use the side of my brush to skim along these sharp edges to get the highlight. So if I turn the model around like that, you see, I can access that edge. Using the side of my brush, I can just skim across there like that, which ensures a nice, neat, straight line running all the way along that edge like that. It gives a lovely highlight. Then all I'll do is turn the model like that. So again, I can access this hem of the robes like that and then just follow it around, avoiding that recess part where it's a bit darker. And then just going all the way around like this. So you see by doing this, it's a lovely, easy way of getting a nice highlight. Now, in addition, we need to highlight the creases that are on the robes. And to do this, what I recommend you do is just turn, turn the model so that you're going to be painting downwards and towards yourself. So for example, on this one here, I want to be painting a downward motion like that. If you do that, it's very easy to see what you're doing and it's actually a very natural motion. So as long as you're bracing your hands, it's very easy just to run a straight line down like that, you see. So all I'm doing is looking for the top of these creases and just gently running a line like that, going all the way down. And with that highlight applied, all those white robes are now completed and we can move on to finishing off all the red detail. And for this, the first color we need is some Evelson Scarlet. Now, once again, going to be using a small airbrush to apply this in just the same sort of way as we did with the previous color. So again, a little bit of that paint on the palette, thin down so it's a little bit runny. There we go. And then it's just a matter of making sure your brush isn't overloaded with it. Because now what we want to do is start applying this just as we did with the previous colour, beginning with the inside of those robes. So what we want to do is just angle the brush again so you're catching that inside edge and just very gently just skim along that area like that. See, I'm just really bracing my hands, taking my time to get a nice highlight on the inside there like that, and then down there. There we go. Now, in addition, we want to be sure to highlight those armour plates too, so these ones over the shoulders, so just along there, again looking for those edges. And one of the detail at this stage to do as well is those purity seals. If you have any there on the wax, just be sure to paint most of it using Eelson Scarlet like this to help separate it from the darker red robes around it. Once that first highlight's applied, if you want to, you can then go on to add a second highlight to the red details to make them pop out a little bit more, which is something you might want to reserve just for your characters, but if you want to do it, what you need is some Fire Dragon Bright. Now you don't need very much of this when you're applying it, so you just need to make sure you get a small amount of this ready, as always diluted down with some water so it's nice and runny, there we go. And then just make sure you've only got a very small amount of it, and you'll see this is quite a thin colour, so it's perfect for what we're going to be using it for here. What we want to do is to use it to pick out the very sharpest details on the red. So in the case of the shoulder plates, it's just a small amount in the corners such as just there. See in all the corners, and you do that on all four of those. And also on the robes, it's a case of just on the very ends that stand out the most. So in this case, just at the very end there. You see very small amounts just to help it pop out a little bit more. In addition, this is a great colour for a final highlight on the purity seals for which you just need to pick out the raised texture. And there we are, the red details are now complete and we can just move on to highlighting the remaining colours on the miniature. First of all, we'll need some Mechanica Standard Grey for all that black detail, followed by some Stormho Silver, which will be for all that silver detail. Then using Psychorax Bronze, we're going to highlight all the bronze detail. And finally, what we need is just a little bit of Scrag Brown, and this is going to be for all the leather and wood. But first of all, we need Mechanica Standard Grey, and again, I'm using my small layer brush, and we just need a small amount of this prepared to start to pick out the tops of any creases that we can find on the black detail. So. Once you've got that paint ready, it's just a matter of looking for those. And on the legs, of course, it's going to be the main part of this. What we're looking for is these edges, such as along there, where we get more of a sharp corner. We just want to emphasise them ever so slightly using the paint like this. Now, in addition, you'll often have some black detail on hands when they're wearing gloves. In the case of that, just make sure you just run along the tops of the fingers too.
With that done, we're then ready to move on to highlighting all the silver details using Stormhost Silver. And at this stage, I recommend going to your finest brush. So I've gone to a detail brush in the Army Painter for this. And once again, what I'm looking to do is to pick out all the edges of these silver parts. Now, even though I'm using the side of my brush, you can see it's close to the tip of it. So you can see I can just get to these very shallow details just to run around the edges of them and pick them out with a fine line of this color. The real trick to doing this is to brace your hands correctly just to keep nice and steady to allow you to get to that detail. So notice how I'm always making sure that both my hands are touching the miniature in some way. Next up we need a small amount of Cycorex bronze and this is to apply a highlight to all the bronze details. So once again just look for those sharper edges and very gently just run your brush along those corners. And finally, using Scrag Brown, we're ready to highlight any of the brown leather details, such as on the backpack here. Again, looking for those edges and just using the side of the brush to skim along them like that. In addition, we're looking for any edges on the wood on the rifle, in which case it's going to be just along here. You can see there's a sharp edge there, so I just want to make sure I catch along that edge like that. And with that highlight applied, we've now finished highlighting all the details in the miniature. And the last thing that we need to do is just to paint some glowing blue areas, such as on the gun and a few lenses too. Now for this, all we need is Kalidor Sky for our base coat, followed by a little bit of Baharoth Blue and then a tiny bit of White Scar. First of all though, using Kalidor Sky, what we need to do is just base coat the whole area that we want to be this colour. So a small airbrush from Citadel is the perfect size for doing this. And all you've got to do is just get some of that paint ready and then it's a matter of identifying these areas and covering them with this colour. So to begin with we've got these coils that are on the carbine just here and what I want to do for this is to paint the raised areas and also the recesses between each of them there like that you see. So I'm just coating that whole area with this blue. And as for the lenses all we've got to do is just pick them out such as the one over the shoulder just here. It's just a matter of painting the whole of the glass using this colour. Next up we need some Baharoth Blue and this on the coils is for the raised areas only. So use the side of your brush and just skim along like this so you get the lighter blue line appearing on the top of them and that more intense blue in the deeper recesses there like that. As for the lenses what we want to do is to paint some of this colour in the middle of them leaving a little bit of Calador Sky still showing around the outside. And finally, we just need a very small amount of white scar. So I've switched my detail brush from the Army Painter here, and on the coils, all we've got to do is gently flick across it using the side of the brush like this, just to make it a little bit whiter down the very top there like that, just to increase the glow in that area. Now, as for the lenses, meanwhile, all we need to do is put a very tiny dot of this colour in the very centre of each one. And with that done, well, your Skitari is ready to be based. And as always, you can base it in any way you like, but make sure it's one that matches the rest of your army. For this miniature, I'm going to go for a desert base. And with the base now fully painted, this Skitari Vanguard is complete and ready to take to the battlefield in the name of the Omnissar. So as you've seen, painting these models is really straightforward, but a real great trick is, like we did at the start of this video, just removing the model from the base so you can paint the inside of the cloak, then gluing it back on and just carrying on from there. If you do that, you'll find accessing all that detail is so much easier. But that's the key thing to remember, so we really hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you all again very soon.